when Tibet was seized by, by uh, uh, Mao Zedong's guards that time. Seized. And they were shelling Lhasa. Shelling. Bombing. 1959. The Dalai Lama asked to ask the famous oracle, Kangsa Kuten. Kangsa is a famous Dorji Shukna oracle it's in, in Tibet. And then the oracle went into trance. Trijaramchi couldn't go because he's too high. So he sent his assistant, another Rimchi student, to have audience to ask, should the all, all, Tamjikam, all knowing holder of the notice, lead, holder of the lotus, leave Tibet or stay? Incredible. The protector immediately, Dorji Shukna entered immediately and did a dance, did a very powerful dance. And he took his sword and he threw it and it landed on the ground with a kata. And he says, hold this sword at, the, at your entourage. Tell His Holiness, leave now. I will be with him. Nothing will come. Leave now. So in the middle of the night, because of Dorji Shugden's instructions, Sri Ramji, all of them had to wear lay clothes for the first time in their life and assist His Holiness, the Royal Mother, the Holy Mother, the Mother of His Holiness, and his brothers and sisters, and the High Lamas, Ling Rinchi, all that, and the few monks from Gandhin, Sarah Drepung, onto the entourage of his holiness, and there are 100,000, you know, <laughs> escape into the night. Even though he didn't told them how to go, where to go. And why? We have monks living today who were there, who witnessed this. The monastery of Sera, near Maizo. The previous abbot of this monastery accompanied the Dalai Lama. Lopsan Yesha was his assistant. He went to the oracle of Dorishe Shukten in his retreat in order to request exact instructions, says Lopsan Yeshe. I was sent to ask the oracle. I was the only one present. The oracle said that the Chinese had prepared everything. The life of the Dalai Lama is no longer safe. You should go to the summer palace tomorrow and asked the Dalai Lama to leave the country via the southern route. Was this the advice the oracle gave? Yes, that's what the protector told me through the oracle, just like we're talking to each other. Lopsang Yeshe tells us that the oracle gave precise instructions as to how and by which route the escape should take place with the monks as his bodyguards. If it had not been for Dorji Shugden's help at that time, an escape would have been really difficult. The bodyguards left the summer palace first. Farther to the south, at a secret place, they met with the Dalai Lama troops. Normally, it's so difficult to see or meet the Dalai Lama. I thought, what a lucky moment. On the one hand, I was happy. On the other hand, I was also very sad, and tears came to my eyes. The others rode on horses, and we followed them on foot. We had to carry all sorts of things, swords, rifles, and so forth. We walked and walked, and could not keep up. The escape took 13 days. At the border, the bodyguard said goodbye to the Dalai Lama and returned to Tibet. I was very sad. Now the Dalai Lama and his great teachers are going. They're all going to India. We must return. <laughs> on the one hand, I was happy that they were in safety. But on the other hand, I was very sad when I thought of the future. We owe so much to His Holiness. I think of this always. In the months to come, 100,000 Tibetans followed the Dalai Lama into exile. This is written in Trijaramji's own biography, and the Dalai Lama told him to write it, by the way. You'll read in the beginning of the biography, the Dalai Lama asked me to write it, I'm not interested. From Tibet, Lhasa, to India, all the way. It was Dorji Shudin who guided. And there were an area near India that was very white. You'll see in, the, in Kundun, you'll see in the movie, a white snow blanketed area. And, I mean, they stick out like, you know, sore thumbs. The Chinese, immediately, airplanes above, looking for Dalai Lama. Because you know what? Right after the Dalai Lama escaped, they bombed, they shelled, and they went one by one looking for the Dalai Lama to check 
if he's dead or not in Hassa, but he escaped. And on the way, immediately when he was escaping in an open area, a huge cloud, this, the Dalai Lama said himself, a huge cloud covered the whole entourage and the planes flew over, couldn't see anything, went off. That was the biggest danger they had. That was him. And every single day, the Kamba, one section of Tibet, very tough guys who sworn their life to the devotion of the Dalai Lama, right? Carry swords and rifles. They don't care about Buddhism. You, you want to say anything about Dalai Lama, they kill you at the end. Not everybody in Tibet were holy. Anyways, they're, they're called Chushikantruk. Four water, six rivers, six mountains. They're an association that protects the Dalai Lama, bodyguards. They're protected by the Every day in the morning, they make sung offering. Juniper, they, like we do outside here, juniper every day, and black tea guide us. Every single day. And it took, what, 20 days, 15, 20 days, for his, one month for His Holiness to traverse across the long way to India. And if it wasn't for His Holiness escaping from Tibet, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be here. And the one that took him out was Doji Shugden. Again, the protector of the Dharma. Oh, this one you can read in Trijanamachi's biography. You can go onto the internet. You hear about monks from Sarah who talk about it. That they were there, they were one of the, the armed forces, they were there to protect His Holiness. And the, and the oracle, everything. So, if the protector can take care of someone like His Holiness and help him escape from Tibet and high lamas, I think he can take care of us. Mm-hmm.